Hello, uh, so here we are going to look at kidney diseases and just to start off, uh, just a quick recap of the function of the kidney. There are three main functions. One is of course to excrete metabolic waste products. Um, generally the kidney secretes about one litre of urine per day. And uh, the next uh, important function is to maintain salt and water balance. And uh, part of this is via the renin-angiotensin system. The kidney also has additional endocrine functions, um, such as producing erythropoietin, which is a hormone that is responsible for regulating uh, erythropoiesis. Now let's move on to looking at actual diseases in the kidney. And again, um, I'm going to follow the exact categories that I mentioned earlier on, the three main categories, the first of which is medical conditions. So medical kidney conditions, um, this is the super uh, complex one where we're going to talk about glomerular diseases, etc. So let me just write it out here first for you. So by medical, I'm referring to non-surgical. So these are usually medically treated. And we'll go according to the anatomical compartments of the kidney or the components. Um, one of which is glomeruli. So under glomerular diseases, uh, we have a whole host of conditions which I will talk about in the next mind map. And glomerular diseases are often immune mediated. Now the next big category is tubulo interstitial diseases. Conditions of the renal tubules often also affect the interstitium and therefore they are considered together. And in terms of etiology, they are mainly due to either ischemic or toxic insults, as well as uh, inflammatory mechanisms or infection. And uh, the last uh, main compartment is the blood vessels. So that is the last disease uh, type that we will talk about. All these three will be covered later in a separate mind map where we look at the medical or non-surgical kidney conditions. Now let's move on to kidney tumours. Kidney tumours are generally considered as surgical conditions and um, probably uh, one of the ways to divide them would be to look at tumours in adults versus children. And this is a, just a very, very broad sketch. It's in no way comprehensive. So among the adults, I just want to talk about one benign tumour, that is the angiomyolipoma. Now as the name suggests, it is actually composed of three components. And um, this tumour has got quite a classical appearance on imaging, which was mentioned in your lecture notes. And the three components include fat, um, spindle, myoid type of cells, and blood vessels. So that's how we recognise them on histology. Now for the malignant tumours, there are uh, different types of malignant tumours, but the most important and common one is renal cell carcinoma. And the most classical variant is that of clear cell carcinoma. It's important to just take note of uh, one characteristic of this tumour, and this is that it likes to metastasize very late and to very strange locations. So it can metastasize to uh, locations such as the thyroid um, on occasion. Now in terms of children, uh, there's just one tumour that I want to mention, and this is the nephroblastoma or the Wilms tumour. And um, this usually occurs in children about two to five years of age and is a very interesting looking tumour. It's got some embryonal elements and can even have some um, mesenchymal elements as well. Okay, so uh, the next uh, major category of disease would be the congenital disorders occurring in the kidney. And um, these would fall into several categories, uh, such as abnormal development, such as dysplasia of the kidneys or dysplastic kidneys. This refers to not so much a pre-malignant change as it does to abnormal uh, development. There can also be renal hypoplasia as well as agenesis. Um, other types of congenital disorders include uh, abnormal gross structure or positioning of the kidney. And one such example is a horseshoe kidney, which is what you can see here. Instead of having two separate kidneys, there is actually just a single lobulated kidney in the shape of a U or a horseshoe. And you can see two of the ureters coming out from it. Now moving on, we also have a whole host of congenital cystic diseases of the kidney. And um, this is a spectrum. 
one of the conditions uh, is called cystic renal dysplasia, where there are uh, cysts within the kidney and there's also some admixture of immature elements, including some mesenchymal elements like, such as cartilage. Now, this can be unilateral, in which case the prognosis is still okay because there's still one other functioning kidney, but um, usually there'll be some degree of renal impairment and renal failure when it is bilateral. There is also polycystic kidney disease, and this is subdivided into the adult type, which is autosomal dominant, and the uh, childhood type, which is uh, autosomal recessive. This is a picture of an example of adult type uh, autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease, and you can see very, very large cystic spaces, and these are actually uh, arising within the tubular component of the kidney, and this uh, often would result in uh, renal failure. Um, it is also important to take note of some of the extra renal manifestations of this disease, which includes cysts within the pancreas, within the liver, also um, the development of uh, vascular abnormalities such as berry aneurysms within the circle of Willis at the base of the brain. And this can give rise to actually potentially fatal subarachnoid hemorrhage. So it is important to pick up these other extra renal conditions in the patient. Now, um, the next condition is the medullary sponge kidney. And medullary sponge kidney may actually not be picked up. Uh, it may only be incidentally found in adulthood, for example. And this usually is um, accompanied by relatively normal uh, renal function. So I also want to mention here that in addition to the congenital types of uh, cystic disorders in the kidney, um, there is also a quiet cystic, cystic disease and most importantly or commonly in the setting of uh, long-term dialysis in patients with end-stage renal disease. Uh, this dialysis-associated cystic kidney disease is important because it carries with it a risk of developing renal cell carcinoma. So just to very briefly recap, we have looked at the main large categories of diseases in the kidneys, which includes medical kidney conditions, meaning non-surgical conditions. Um, I will talk about these in a separate mind map. Then we've talked uh, briefly, looked at an overview of kidney tumors in adults and children, and then finally looked at congenital disorders in terms of the abnormal development, abnormal structure or position, as well as cystic kidney diseases. So next, we are going to move on to talk about medical kidney conditions and do a little bit of clinical pathologic correlation there.